Valley Connection is brought to you by RPS Video Productions. Welcome to this month's edition of the Valley Connection, a monthly show spotlighting our Valley's issues, concerns, and events. I'm Nancy Lopez. And I'm Cesaria Hernandez. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. That's right. It's a holiday season. Yes. One of my favorite times of the year. Oh, mine too, <laughs> Nancy. Mine too. <laughs> a lot of activities and a lot of eating, I must say. Oh, yes, that's right. And I heard that you got to go out and do a little special eating here I in town. I did. It was so much fun, Cesaria. We went out to one of the Valley's most, I think, favorite events of the year and it was the Autumn Elegance and it was held at the Country Club at Saboba Springs and this was a very not only just festive event but a very worthwhile event. We're going to be talking about that a little later. Well I got to sit down with somebody very important here in town. He is the superintendent of schools for Hemet Unified School District, Dr. Barry Karel. And we talked all about a lot of the different issues, a lot of different things that got passed, like Measure U and Proposition 30, and what, how they're exactly going to affect our schools here in the Valley. That's right. And we have so many uh, Christmas lights and so many activities going on. We got to travel up the hill to Idlewild, and we went for their Christmas tree lighting ceremony. Ooh. It was what a fun event. And so we have some spotlights from that and some interesting shots that we're going to share with you. So you're going to want to stay tuned to see all that and a lot, lot more right after this. Welcome back to the show. Well, this month we let Nancy out of the studio for a change and got her all gussied up and sent her off to Autumn Elegance. That's right. Took a lot of work, but somebody <laughs> had to do it, so I volunteered. No, it was a very fun event. And this Autumn Elegance is an annual event and it helps support uh, Valleywide Recreation and Park District and other charities as well. Annual fundraiser Autumn Elegance was held at the Country Club at Saboba Springs. With a packed house, participants enjoyed a wide variety of delicacies prepared by our area's finest restaurants and an extensive selection of California's finest wines and other beverages. Nancy had an opportunity to speak with Rose Salgado. This is a new venue, right, here? Yes. Tell us about how this is working out. Okay, this is the first year that the Autumn Elegance is being held at Saboba Springs Country Club, and we're very excited. As you can see, there's so many people. I think they've sold overcapacitated. They're selling of tickets. We have six, I believe they sold 600 tickets. It's just a beautiful location. It is. It's very beautiful. I think the setup was really well done with the food, the card games, the dancing, the music, the terrace. Absolutely beautiful out there. With such great choices of fabulous food to sample from and great entertainment to dance off all those extra calories, I could understand why they had the turnout that they did. After experiencing delicious cuisine from some of our wonderful local restaurants, we had a lot to work off on that dance floor. I'm with Tom Wilson, who is on the board of directors at Friends for Valley Wide. And Tom, how long has this event actually been going on? This is our 20th year of doing uh, uh, Autumn Elegance. And how did it get started way back 20 years ago? Well, it was started by members of the Exchange Club in the Valley. Uh, Jerry Agnes, a member at that time, uh, he went to an event that his father was an Exchange Club member in Riverside. They had a similar event, and he brought it back to the Valley 20 years ago. 
and uh, we've been doing it ever since. A very popular event, I might say. And tell us something about uh, the proceeds and how this is going to uh, benefit our community. Well, the proceeds from this event, part of the proceeds go to the Exchange Club, and we provide scholarships to the youths in the Valley. And we do 20 $500 scholarships from this particular event. The remainder of the money goes to Friends of Valleywide to assist in Valleywide projects, part of which has been Diamond Valley Swimming Complex, uh, Searle Sports Park, uh, lighting of regional stadium, just, just a, a great number of uh, projects that we've assisted from funds from this event. How have you seen this event change over the years? Well, we've been in the mall for 19 years. Uh, last year, we are in the old Forever 21 store. And uh, this year, we're partnering with Saboba, and it's, it's a great partnership. They have exceeded our expectations of being a host and, and accommodating us, and it's an overwhelming, overwhelming success. So it's, uh, you know, supported by the folks in the Valley. I mean, it, without uh, people buying tickets, we couldn't have the event, and really, it's people, of, you know, giving nature and, and coming and enjoying the event. And I am so honored to have with me Nick Scouten, who is with Valleywide. Any and everything you would ever want to know about Valleywide, this man has the answer. Let's go way back. How did Valleywide get started? Well, we had some people interested in um, a community center, recreation for the kids in the Valley. And there was a vote on it, and it was a nickel for every $100 worth of value to your homes. And, and, <laughs> and today that nickel is worth about 0.05 cents, something like that. <laughs> but anyway, that's how we got started. And at that time, we were in the back room of the old city, of, city hall of the Chamber of Commerce in San Jacinto. And from there we went into uh, just the... Uh, a basement for meetings and then from there we went to uh, the over by uh, on Florida behind the milk store area over there by McDonald's and that's how we got started. Did you ever dream it would become what it has today? I'll tell you what I never dreamed it would be this big. Each general manager we had was so important to the growth of Valley Wide. In particular Sam Gepp. And now we have a new general manager, Dean Witter, who is just an excellent. And the board, each board we've had, was just spectacular and worked together like a team. Nick, tell us, what does Valley Wide mean to this community? Valley Wide, I believe, is the heart and soul of young, old, moms and me, old Olympics, it's just, it's a part of everything. And we cover an 800 square mile area. Menifee, Awanga, French Valley, Roma Land, Homeland, Hemet, San Jacinto, Val Vista. And it's just, it has grown magnificently. We have 76 parks, 39 lighted ball fields, and nine community centers. You probably have no idea how many people's lives you have affected through Valleywide, do you? You're absolutely right. And I gotta tell you, I'm proud, and my wife is proud, of the things that we have accomplished over the years and made, I hope, made this a better place for everybody. I bet nights like tonight is so special to you to see so many of the community coming out in support of Valleywide and the organization. Yes, it is. And I'll tell you, a lot of this goes to the foundation, which we instituted also. And it helps a lot of charity events, and it helps Valleywide itself. It gives out scholarships to kids that can't afford to, have, their parents can't afford to play ball or anything like that. And so that's what we are about. And I got to tell you, the board of directors do not take any pay. And I just love those people to death. 
Well, we love you and we appreciate so many of the years of service you've given to this community. Thank you. Thank you so much for asking. Even though this fundraiser was overly crowded, it was a lot of fun and very successful. If your normal daily water supply is interrupted due to the unexpected, will you and your family have access to safe, clean, life-sustaining water? Locally owned California Water Storage is a leader in the manufacturing of residential and commercial stainless steel water storage tanks. Water is one of our most precious natural resources. Store it safely with the strength, durability, and hygienic material that our stainless steel water tanks provide. Visit our website or call 909-292-7388 for more information. And welcome back. And Cesario, you got to sit down with somebody that is new to our valley and our district, my new boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I got to sit down with Dr. Barry K. Rail. Now, he is a superintendent for Hemet Unified School District, and he gave us lots of valuable information about things happening here in our local schools. Joining me now is Dr. Barry K. Rail, Hemet Superintendent. Thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here and excited to speak to you this afternoon. Well, now then, we just came through an election cycle here and a lot of different things were happening, especially in regards to education. Let's talk first of all about Prop 30. Right. I, I think all of us run pins and needles for its passage. I think it's, there's a little bit of a misconception from the public that it's gonna save public education. And really, the effects of it is that we will not be cut an additional $451 per student. And so while we're very relieved that it passed, uh, in essence, we will not be really seeing any new monies, um, but it'll preserve the programs that we have at this juncture and we won't be cut anymore. Okay, so in other words, Prop 30 was kind of a wash, but at least we didn't lose anything. That is correct. Okay, well, let's talk about Proposition U. You bet. Very excited that the citizens in the Hemet Valley uh, strongly supported our bond measure. And it really is a bond reauthorization. And by almost 69% um, gave really a strong message that uh, the community definitively supports public education. And we're excited. Um, our, our first project with those monies will be to remodernize Acacia Middle School. And I reviewed the plans uh, today. I met with our MNO director, and and we're just I'm just thrilled that we'll be able to really get a whole new facelift to that school, including a signature new gymnasium, which that school has long needed over the years, and it will add a, just an extra dimension to the campus. Uh, we'll work on the project as the kids are in session. It'll probably take about a year, year and a half to complete it, um, but it's going to be state of the art. The communication systems, the computer systems, all will be 21st century, and those kids will have all of the bells and whistles that, that, that they need f you know, to continue their education. Wow, how exciting for our middle schoolers here in town. You bet. Well, now tell me, as parents, you know, we all know that there have been a lot of budget cuts and that education is really hurting out there. What can we as individuals do to really help our children at this time? You know, I think being involved with young people from transition kindergarten all the way through high, high school is critical. Uh, knowing who your children hang out with and their friends. I, I think advocating for um, uh, kids to be involved in extracurricular programs, whether it's athletics or fine arts, ROTC, FFA, it doesn't matter. I think the other very valuable component is a sense of volunteerism. We love to have parents in our schools and in our classrooms to be an integral part, uh, whether they're once a week you know, to read in class or be part of a, a, a K-5 program, uh, to be part of booster organizations. It's critical that parents uh, create that bond with young people and be part of the schools in, in our community. And, and again, that connection is a lifelong thing. And, and to learn to give back to the community and to the schools, very, very important for us. Yes, it is, definitely. Now, I know that there have been a few changes on the school board here. You bet. Uh, again, our le election that just was completed, two of our incumbents um, uh, won their seats. Uh, um, and I'm very pleased with that and adds continuity to the board and Lisa and Marilyn uh, add an extra dimension to our board and then we have Jim coming on board, a longtime educator in the Hemet Valley, 
um, knows a, a lot of people and I'll have a meeting with him tomorrow and I'm anxious to welcome him to the board and, and, and to go over some of the expectations and help him acclimate into the new group of seven people and uh, the governance part of our, our, our district is very important and we're very excited to have him come aboard. Now then, if people want to volunteer and get involved in the schools, who should they contact? You know, we go through our site principles and we have a policy that all of our volunteers have, have to receive a background check and we do the fingerprinting and make sure they're, you know, they're, they're safe to be on our campuses. And then the individual principals will assign them at their respective schools. Wonderful. Tell me, what do you think is one of the most exciting things that we can be looking forward to here at Hemet Unified over the next year or two? You know what, I think the, the implementation of our 21st century standards, um, as, as we really, I think we're at a crossroads in public education and that we're, we're creating a new dynamic where teachers are, are teaching to the new state standards uh, and, and the rigor in our classrooms, our, our data protocols that we're working on, we're really improving and connecting the curriculum to our kids. And, and I'm very excited about it. And um, I, I think the old style of teaching where people got up and, and lectured for 40 or 50 minutes, I think we're going to have interactive lessons, hands-on approach uh, where, where kids can you know, manipulate models and, and do interactive models with computer-based and computer-generated things. All, all are going to move us into the 21st century. So I, I think it's, it's an exciting time and our teachers are being trained and, and I think accepting the new curriculum and the new teaching methodologies. And so we're doing a great job with that and our, our staff development programs in our district are second to none in Hemet. So I'm very excited about that. Well, it does sound like an exciting and challenging time um, for everybody in education. We thank you so very much, Superintendent, for being here with us. Well, you're very welcome. and look forward to bigger and better things for Hemet. Absolutely. We're going to be right back with more of the Valley Connection right after this. Welcome back. Now we're going to head out to see some of the sights and sounds of the season here in our valley. And Nancy, you got to go somewhere very special. I did. It was such a fun night, Cesario. I went up to Idlewild. First time I had ever been there for the Christmas tree lighting ceremony. So many people, dogs, everything, you name it, <laughs> kids. It was just a very fun evening. Can't wait to share it with you. At the Harvest Festival in Idlewild, Many came out to experience a little of the hometown old-fashioned Christmas season. And the beard on his chin was white as the snow. A stump of a pipe he held in his teeth, and the smoke encircled his head. Lots of good toys. He's here to 
I am here at one of my very favorite places, downtown Idlewild, and we are here to celebrate the 52nd annual Christmas tree lighting ceremony. And as you can tell, there are a lot of people here to help us celebrate. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. Over the hills we go, riding on the wind. Oh, the funny it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Riding on the wind. Oh, the funny it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Over the hills we go, riding on the wind. Bells on bar till ring. I'll give you a diamond ring. Oh, what fun it is to ride in this one-horse open sleigh. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells. And I am very honored to be with Casey Abrams, who. Needs no introduction, I'm sure. You sure? I don't know. <laughs> hey, I feel like I know you after watching you on American Idol so we're many like, times. We're like best buds. Yeah, right we now. are. We are. <laughs> hey, Casey, you were raised here in Idlewild. Can I you, was. You were? <laughs> Ever since fifth grade, actually. Ever since fifth grade. Yeah, and you know what? It's actually kind of made me who I am today. It uh, got me in touch with Mr. Mr. Marshall Hawkins, the local jazz legend. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he taught me bass and piano and drums and everything. <laughs> Casey entertains the crowd with his mentors from the Idlewild Arts Academy, Marshall Hawkins and Paul Carmen. Even like being here and just like being around crazy, weird, artistic people kind of helped me, you know, yeah, realize. You exactly. <laughs> I sure love you up here. Oh, it's 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 good to see love, you know, it's good vibes. Classically trained Casey Abrams not only has a great voice but can play eleven different musical instruments. This talented young artist feels music is exploration and it's fun to see what comes from taking chances and pushing his boundaries constantly. What a gift. This is Casey Abrams, and I'd like to wish everyone a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy Hanukkah. White Feather Investigations has been serving Southern California since 2002. We are a success-oriented agency and are experience-driven with a documented track record of positive results. By using advanced investigative technology and surveillance techniques specifically developed by our company, we give our clients the best possible outcome while still working within their budget. White Feather Investigations, uncovering deception and seeking the truth for you. The Hammock Christmas Parade had 105 entries with a large crowd lining Florida Avenue. This year's theme was celebrating the 90th anniversary of the Ramona pageant. Here are some highlights.
It was great to see so much of our community involved in this year's Christmas parade. Now let's get back to the studio. And welcome back as we close the show. It was a great show we had this time. Yes, it was. And before we end it tonight, I just want to send out a very Merry Christmas to my mother, Louise Hernandez, and all of the sweet ladies at Eugenia's Sweet Home Care here in San Jacinto. Merry Christmas, yes, ladies. Merry Christmas <laughs> to you guys. <laughs> and we hope that you have a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. And before we close the show, we want to remind you again to please shop local. If you haven't finished all your Christmas shopping, please That's get right. out there and shop local. And please go to our website, thevalleyconnection.net, where you can see this show or any previous shows. We'd like to wish all of our viewers a very, very prosperous and happy New Year coming up here in 2013. And Nancy, yes. any big plans for New Year's? Just, no, just be safe. How about you? Same here, same here. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time, we'll see you on The Valley Connection.